Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 681. Today we're gonna to take a look at Barrage. This is a new game that's coming out soon from Cranio Creations, although if you backed the Kickstarter, I think about a year ago, you probably have your copy already. Uh, the retail release I'm not positive on, but I think it's relatively soon. Now what this is, is a one to four player, uh, it's a worker placement game, but it also has some very interesting other dynamics to it. It's set in sort of an alternate history, steampunky, uh, 1930s kind of vibe. Uh, and what players are doing is they're building these dams to collect water and then produce energy. Again, because it has kind of a steampunk vibe going along with that. So it's not, don't look at it and be like, we well, build dams, that sounds super boring. It's got a cool kind of steampunk thing happening. There's a lot of crazy special abilities and things like that. And it's a very meaty, chunky uh, worker placement game. But let's talk about how it works uh, mechanically. And then I'll come back and tell you what I think of the game. Okay, so I've got a lot of stuff going on. This is another game that's hard to shoot. One thing to know is there's kind of three main boards. You can see my main board here with the map and the different reservoirs of water is there. And you have this kind of worker placement marketplace type of board there. And then you have a board up here which keeps track of turn order and energy produced and some bonus tiles and stuff like that. So you can arrange them like this and it all looks like one board. Or you can, if your table is limited for space, you can kind of move stuff around. So you're going to be interacting with a lot of stuff out here. A. Each player is going to have their own player board with this little wheel here, like so. And there's a bunch of these that you can get. Uh, and these are just different sort of, think of them civilizations or nations and stuff like that. And you can see they have different characters on them there. And then you're gonna have a different a kind of leader character or special ability character here. And there's a stack of these as well. You're gonna take one of these and then pair it with your civilization. This is gonna give you a few things to note here. Uh, this is gonna tell you how much money you start with. So in this case, you start with six money, six of the brown workers and uh, four of the gray workers. I'm not gonna call them by their name because it's easier to <laughs> reference them that way. So you're gonna fill this up here. You have these little itty bitty workers like so. These are really small, but that's okay. There's a reason that they're that small and you get some money out here. Like so, you're gonna start with that. And then you're gonna fill up your board with the pieces in your color. And these pieces are actually differently shaped uh, based on well, which faction you choose here. And then you have your proper workers here. These are the workers you're gonna be taking your worker, worker placement actions uh, with on your turn. Now each player is also going to get a starting contract. You can see these have the white hands on the back and you'll get that. And you can kind of, we just been dealing them out randomly. You get a set of a civilization with a character and then a contract. But I would say moving forward, I played this a few times now, I would say definitely draft them because you can kind of a combination of civilization plus uh, contract plus, you know, uh, character there. Some of these character abilities, which you can see at the bottom left here, that's the kind of the special ability of your character. Uh, some are better than others. So there's that. And then you get these building tiles. These are like action tiles. And if you're playing the advanced game, you don't use this wild one. And I recommend just play with the advanced game. It's been my experience that that is the best way to play the game. Uh, so then you're all set up there and you're ready to start taking actions. Now the game's played over four rounds. You're gonna take turns placing out your workers, uh, doing the actions immediately. And then what you're trying to do is build these dams out onto the board. So before we talk about any of the actions, the actions are very, very dead simple. Let's talk about the concept of why you're building these dams and then also uh, these power conduits and so on. And then you have your power stations at the bottom. Like why are you doing that? Cause that's the main way that you score points and fulfill special bonuses and all that stuff. Well, if you take a look at the board here, you can see you've got these different reservoirs of water. At the top here, we have like the head streams and these are filled with tiles here that come out randomly. There's a bunch of these and these are gonna tell you how much water is gonna start at the top. So beginning of round one, we'll have one, two is one and one for every round in that one. But like this other one, for example, will have nothing in the first two rounds. You can see there, and then one and two in the last round. Uh, and then you're also gonna seed the board based on drawing some of these startup tiles here for the different terrain types. And you're gonna start with some neutral dams that are in play in these various different terrain types. So you've got kind of your, your plains, your glasslands, you've got your hills here, and you've got your mountains. You can see down here, the setup told us to put a dam that's three stacks high 
and then you start off with a little bit of water in there. Now these neutral dams basically belong to anybody, so anybody can make use of them. So what you might do, if we zoom out just a little bit here, is you might try to build one of your little power conduits right on this spot, right? Because remember, neutral dam, anybody can use it. And just for argument's sake, I'm gonna move that to the side. You can see it's got one water. Now the height of the dam is gonna be the amount of water that it can hold. So if it was height one, all it could hold was one, but now it's height three. So let's add a couple of more water tokens there because the more water, the better. Water is gold in this game, basically. And then you can see here, this power conduit, if you follow the pipeline there, is connected to this area here, where if you built one of your stations, like so, you could then take an action to convert all of this water into energy, and that's what everybody's trying to do. Now, if you had your own dam, let's say you had your dam over here, like so, you could then build a converter here, like so, and then you can see this pipe goes all the way over to here. Now, one thing you can do is use other players' uh, converters here. So if I had, if somebody else had built a converter there, let's say the white player, for example, then I could run that through there, although they will get money and victory points uh, if I use their converter. So that's something you can kind of do. So when you do that though, you're basically gonna convert based on this number. Is it, so this is a three, this is a two, over here you can see there's a one, some go up to what, five, I think is the highest one. You're gonna get basically that much energy times the number of water that you pass through it. So if I put three, that'd be nine energy, I would get that. We'll talk about that more in a minute, but that's what you're trying to do. Now, the other thing is as water kind of flows downstream here, these dams, like I said, are gonna catch it. So this one can hold three. So if we, let's say it was a height two, for argument's sake, we had two here, and then we had water kind of running down the dam. This is now full, so this is gonna run down to further along the board, or if it's at the bottom of the board like this, it's gonna run off the board and go back into the supply. So you can also build dams in front of other people. So if white here wanted to spend a little bit extra money, they can build that dam. So new water is gonna get caught here. And then again, let's say they got their converter there already, then they can start converting that into, you know, one of their power stations that they built in these spots here. So there's a little bit of like, you can kind of ninja, you know, uh, it's kind of the water supply from somebody else. But that's kind of the general overall main concept of the game is building these different buildings, you know, getting them in such a way and looking at where the different routes and things are and then stealing that and then converting it and getting energy. And energy is basically just the game. That's what you're trying to do is convert and get the game. Although there's some other kind of sidebar points that you can do. So on your turn, you're gonna do worker placement. So when you do worker placement, you're gonna take actions on a number of spaces. Now this spot up here is the kind of the main worker placement board. So let's start there. This is the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make energy. So you can see here, this spot here cost me two workers. So I have now taken that and where I can make energy and I will get a bonus of plus two energy there. So that's gone. So the next player to go there, which could be me, if they wanted to do that same action and get that plus two energy, they'd have to place three workers and then pay $3. So it's gonna go up. Now you can see here, four and three plus. So if we're playing a two player game, these lines are not used. You don't use those lines. But let's say we're playing a four player game. Somebody else could come here and place two workers. They could do the energy generation action and then get plus one. Again, you get energy based on the number of droplets through the power conduit and so on, you make energy. Now when you make energy, you're going to move your energy marker up this track. Let's say I made six energy, right? I would get that. And I move my marker up to the six. Then later on in the same turn, if I took the same action and I got like four energy and add this up. So you just accumulate energy over the round. At the end of the round, your energy markers are gonna reset and everybody's gonna go back to there. Whoever makes the most energy, you can kind of see way up here, gets six points. Second most gets two points, but then you're gonna be able to start to score these bonus tiles. So you can see here, this six is the magic number. You need at least six energy to score bonus tile. And then the bonus tiles round by round, you can see round one, round two, round three, and round four up here. These get harder to score because as you move along, let's say from the first round here, if you've completed uh, contracts, which I'll show you in just a second, you're gonna get two points per completed contract if you have at least six points, and then that will go away. Now you have a minus four to your bonus multiplier. So let's say I get to here, and these are, this is gonna give me four points per special building tile. Well, I'm gonna take that, let's say I have two special building tiles about the end of the second round. I'm gonna get eight points, but because I didn't get into the next sort of tier, next category here, 
I would get minus four points off of that total. You don't lose the points, but off of your whatever bonus there. So let's say I got the eight points minus four, that'd be four points bonus at the end of the round. If I get up here, then I ignore the four minus four. But then in the third round up here, this one's gonna go away, right? And now this is four points for every dam that's at least too high. But if I don't get enough energy up there, because by the third round, I may have a few of these. If I don't get enough energy, this is gonna reduce the amount of bonus that I get. Then all the way back here, if you actually don't get off the ground and make any energy for that round, which is 100% possible, especially in the first two rounds, uh, I would say you were gonna get three bucks and you're gonna lose three points. As you can see here, your point marker starts at 10, not zero. So that's so in case you lose some points in the first couple rounds, which you will, uh, or which you might, I should say. So that's kind of how energy works. The last thing with energy is remember I showed you your starting contract. So if I take an energy creation action and I make at least three en energy, I can then get this bonus here. This is, again, in this case gives me two bucks and then I get to spin uh, my wheel there, which I'll talk about why you want to do that in a second. But that's that bonus there. If I had in my possession, you know, a better contract here that I required off the board, let's say I made six energy, I would get two points and then get to freely upgrade one of my dams to another height, that kind of thing. So you just, for the one action, if you do that much, then you get the bonus. And you get to turn that over and that's a completed contract. Remember, you get a bonus sometimes for completed contracts in the game. So that is making energy. That is the second most complicated thing in the game. Uh, now we're gonna move away from the main board up here and down to our own board. And here's where we actually start to build our buildings. So we can see we have our own individual spots so you can't be blocked here but the price is going to go up so the first time i want to build any of these buildings here i'm going to take a worker like so and then i'm going to take the matching build tile there so maybe we want to build a power conduit so i'm going to take this with the right amount and the correct type of worker so if i zoom in just a little bit there so if i want to build the base of a dam and i'm building at the near the top of the board in the mountain area, I need five of these brown workers there. If I'm building it near the bottom of the board, for example, I only need three. If I'm improving a dam, so that's what this is, you put that on top there, then I need the gray workers, and again, that depends which area you're in. If we drop down to here, we can see the power conduits. Again, this is the brown workers, and you're gonna need two times whatever the value of, of the space is. So if I wanted to put it here, I would need four of those workers because it's two times whatever that number is right there. But again, these are gonna give you more energy as you do it, so of course they're more expensive. Now that's the power conduit and then the power station here. This is just goes up. So the first one, this guy here, cost you two grays. You build that, the next one's gonna cost you three, four, five, and so on. Now when you build it, remember I said we're gonna, we're gonna build here the power conduit. We're gonna take this, we're gonna take the right amount of workers, so in this case we needed four. We're gonna tuck that in there because that's what we built. We're gonna take our four itty bitty little machines here, these are little worker machines, like that, and put that in there, and then we're gonna tick our wheel one space forward. So now, these four brown machine workers are gonna be out of use for us until this thing moves all the way around. As well, we won't be able to build any more power conduits until this thing comes back. Once this wheel clicks back over, this comes back out, we're now available to build this and then we will get these back to our supply and then we can use them for whatever else we want. So if you remember, when we completed this contract here, this gave us a rotation of the wheel, super handy. And of course, as you build more types of buildings, let's say I wanted to build the dam here, that will trigger it all along. So you can you can build more to push it around, you can get special abilities. There's also some other ways to do it. But that's the gist of building. Now before we go back to the main board, let's talk about this patent office here. Now all of these cost you two workers, it doesn't matter. You pick which one you want to get, you pay the five bucks, and then you get the special tile there. And then this is going to give you another kind of build uh, auction here. And these, I'm not even going to go over these. <laughs> so what we do when we play this is you deal your first three to start the game, look it up in the rule book, it's easy to reference. This one does that, this one does that, this one does that. At the end of the round, these are gonna clear off if there's any left, then you're gonna deal from top to bottom. And then as the new ones come out, then you read them, tell them what to do. They give you all kinds of bonuses. These are just vastly better uh, building tiles than the ones you start with. That's all you really need to know right now. And of course, these cost you five bucks. 
So that's that, let's go back to the main board. Now here is a way to add more water to the board. Here you can add two water to the head of each board. You can put them on the same tile or split them up. This one allows you to add a new one and then just shove it down off of the top of the, the head. So that's, these are the heads I'm talking about here. So if I add a new one, I could take it and it's just gonna start trickling down until it runs into a dam. Again, anything that's stored up here uh, over the course of the round is going to then fall down at the end of the round and get caught by any of the dams. This spot here, as many people as want can go there and you just put one worker there, as many workers as you want and you get one buck per worker you put there. This spot here again, allows you to rotate the wheel. So first spot here is pretty easy, one worker, one wheel rotate. But if you wanna spend a little bit more workers and you have the right number of players, then you can spend some money and rotate the wheel a few more times. Then here's how you might get some more of those mechanical workers. A brown one will cost you two bucks, unless you go there, which costs you additional three. You can get one of your choice or one of each for a little bit more money. Again, depending on the number of players in the game, some of these spots will not be available to everybody. All right, and then the last spot here is this contract spot. And you have two types of contracts. You have, down here at the bottom, you have private contracts. At the top, you have public contracts. Now the public contracts, will just sit there until somebody produces enough energy to be able to claim it. So if somebody produces 13 energy on their turn, they're gonna get six points and they get four workers of their choice. Fantastic. If they do 14 energy here, they could do uh, eight points and then eight coins. So those are just gonna sit there until somebody claims it and then they're just gonna take it. Now these down here, you have to take these worker placement actions here to be able to collect them. So if you go here, you just grab one of your choice. They kind of scale up, right? So these are really easy to do. The rewards aren't as good. These are a little bit harder to do, but the rewards are much better. If you go down here, you can pay a buck and take two. So you take whatever, and these will replenish immediately after you finish your action. So that is like the gist of the game. You play four rounds at the end. This is a little end game bonus tile that's gonna be different each round. Uh, so you might wanna try to target, target that at the end of the game. And again, you're getting energy, moving up this energy track, collecting some income from it, getting some bonus points possibly, resetting your energy marker all the way back down here at the end of each round, resetting the turn order based on whoever got the least energy will be first in turn order and so on. Then you just play four rounds and then that is pretty much the game. Okay, so that is Barrage. Let's talk about my three pillars of review. First thing is player count. Plays one to four players. I've tried it at uh, one, two, and three. I haven't tried it at four. I would definitely have played it at four. I, the one player I didn't like, I don't not really like a competitive solo game. Like if it's a competitive game, when they make it a solo game with an Automon stuff, I don't know, I don't like it. So take my opinion and shove it because <laughs> on a single player of one of these games, because I just have not really played one. I'm like, this is great. Yeah, I don't know, I just don't like it. Unless it's a coin game or something, but. Uh, yeah, so, but the two and the three player games that I played of it is, have been great. I really have enjoyed the game. Uh, it start, in terms of the play time, it says two hours on the box. I think that's about right. I think even with four players, because you're playing four rounds every time, and the time, like the two player game I played of it was, whew, it was about an hour and a half, and the other player had never played it before. I had already played it, and, uh, it's easy to teach. I mean, there's a lot going on and stuff, but it's pretty straightforward once you kind of get a play of it and you can kind of explain how the dams work and the power and what you're trying to do. All the worker placement actions are super just like, do it, done, go. Um, the most complicated one is the building and it's all referenced right there on the player board and stuff. So it's easy to teach and get into and we played an hour and a half, no problem. And I could see four experienced players, experienced players getting it done in about two hours. I could see that happening. Uh, okay, so that's player time. As far as like my favorite player count, two and three was both fine. I really liked it at two. Um, yeah, I mean it was it was fine. It was good. I was better than I expected it to be because it's it's kind of like there's a lot of like jockeying for space and cutting each other off and getting each other's way and cutting off routes and stuff. So you think in a two player game, eh, you know, it wouldn't really be as great when you have three and four players and a lot more people in play. But I still really, really liked it with two players. I would recommend it at two. I guess I could lean and say I liked it more with three and I probably would like it, you know, as much as three as I would at four. Uh, but I still really liked it at two. It was really kind of a surprise actually how well it actually worked. Um, so that's, that's fine, that's player count stuff. The game, like what is it like? I don't know, that's a tough one. It feels like brass, sort of. 
because you can use other people's buildings. So in this case, you can use somebody's power conduit to send stuff from a neutral dam or your dam to one of your power stations. And they're gonna get a little bit of a reward and a benefit off of that. Um, so it has that kind of brassy feel to it there. Um, now it's a worker placement game, which isn't like brass. So it has a, you know, the worker placement kind of thing. The cool thing about the worker placement is it's neat that you don't just block off a spot. You just make it worse. So if I go to the energy action and I get that, I get there first, I get the bonus of plus two, uh, cause some of those energy actions you, you take it and it's a minus bonus. <laughs> so you, you generate energy and then subtract. Um, then, you know, so, but you can still go there. You can still take the action. It's just not as powerful as you could have made it to be, or you might have to spend a little bit extra money on all those spots. So I like that the worker placement kind of took that route as well. The worker placement actions to actually build the buildings, which are your own buildings that you're going to manufacture. Nobody can take those from you. It gets more expensive and costs you more workers. The more you do it, but nobody's gonna block you and be like, oh, well, I couldn't do what I wanted because I couldn't build my dam this turn and just like, uh. So it cuts out some of the, uh, it's not gonna cut out the meanness of the worker placement style game. It's gonna cut out some of what I would say is can be, depending on kind of your, your temperament or your taste, some of the like, I don't know, like meaningless meanness of a worker placement game. Now it's still mean because you can build dams in front of other players and basically intercept some of their water. But that's a little bit more interesting than the passive aggressive, well, I took the building action, so now you can't take it. You know, you can still do that kind of stuff because it's my friggin' building. <laughs> I can build it where I want as long as there's a spot on the board. Um, so the way that the worker placement, it makes sense. It makes thematic sense, like this is a spot that it, it can be used up, it's a resource that you have to take. Whereas like you have your own stuff and your own workers, your own like little mechanical robots go in that wheel and come back to you, you don't really lose them. So the way that they've kind of divided that up I find is really interesting and refreshing. I think what really is setting this game apart from just a basic worker placement game is the way it kind of spreads that out over the course uh, you know, over the, the sort of the map of the game, kind of the mental map of the game. Like it makes sense that I can do this whenever I want and it makes sense that you can block me for doing this thing. Uh, and then I like how the building actions and the wheels work. So it's like you spent it and those things are gonna be busy. You get the immediate benefit of it, but then as that wheel rotates, you're not gonna be able to do, to build another dam until it rotates back and then you can build another one. But you can upgrade and get different technologies, allow you to build other dams, which gets you extra bonuses. Um, and it makes the game feel like very combo-y because you can, you can generate energy, complete a contract, allow you to flip the wheel, which allows you to get this back, and then maybe you can build another building. And so you, it's a very much like an efficiency, efficiency engine type of thing, which is what a lot of Euros are, but the theme of it really kind of works with that because you've got this wheel, this cog, these dams, the water's flowing, you know, the water's gonna come down, you're gonna catch water in a certain way. So the theme of all that stuff really sort of just goes hand in hand with what you're trying to do, which is just a lot of really cool basic Euro stuff that's just been put together, I think, in the right way, right? And so I think that's, that's really where this, kind of sets itself apart is the attention to the detail, the marrying of the theme and the mechanics to each other. And just the way that you can, well, I'll kind of leave with this, is that you can kind of, you get in each other's way on the map, on the board, but you kind of subsist and work together in some ways and you can kind of get in there and ninja a little bit and take some extra bonus points and some extra money and stuff like that and kind of plant your little fingers and your seeds in for later turns where you kind of start to take over that particular reservoir. Like you might go in there and be like, well, if I go in there, then they can just start using it and they'll be getting a bunch of points. I'll get a little bit of a, you know, a helper subsistence kind of income out of it. But then, you know, I'm primed in there to go jump in there. And uh, you know that money, extra money and stuff that I got, I can use that to spend to actually put a, a, a dam in the intercepting spot to, which maybe costs a little bit more, but now I've got some money that you've just been giving me while well, you've been making points, but now I can get in your way and then, hey, that's mine now. <laughs> so that, that kind of interaction is what's really cool and is, is, is a little bit more interesting than a, you know, a lot of worker placement games that have come out over the last 10 years or so. Uh, so Barrage is one of those, again, it was kind of a 2019 release. The backers got it. I don't think it's even out in stores even yet. And this is January in 2020 when this goes live. 
Um, but this this was another another game here. I've, I've done three videos that year. If you're watching these in real time, that I've gone up today, that all three of these games would have been like knocking stuff out of my top ten, uh, most likely uh, from 2019. So this is one in here. Um, this has an expansion with it. I haven't had a chance to play that yet. Um, but this is another one that again that kind of combo efficiency engine stuff is giving me like a lot to kind of give me a taste of it that I want to chew on and explore more and more. Oh no, there was one other thing actually before I wrap up. So the special abilities, I mentioned this in the walkthrough, they are not equal. So you have the special character tile and you kind of draft that and combine that with a nation as well as a starting contract. Some, the situationally I think, are better than others. Now granted, you start with some different starting resources. I would not say they're like, mm, I don't know, like this is, there's a lot of these special characters, so I haven't really like combed through them, like with a fine tooth comb, because I feel like some, they're better or worse, but the worst ones might just take a little bit of nuance and finesse to work. Um, and I don't want to get too much in the details of that, but just the, from the few games I've played and what I've seen, I'm like, well, that seems super easy, useful all the time. Whereas the one I had, I was like, hmm, it's kind of useful a little bit, but then at the end of the game, it's worthless, you know? Uh, but I think there's also some other like strategies and maybe some like n sort of higher level strategies which I haven't really gotten to where I'm like, you know, because after those games I played, I'm like, well, what if I did this where I kind of blitzed this one action and then just did this action that my ability combos with? I said that would crush a lot of other players. And yeah, my ability is not like super great, but it's like if I sort of take that tack that if I'm doing this to get in people's way, then I'm gonna get my little bitty benefit, but then also be messing with other players. So that you know, so there's a, some interesting sort of stuff that I still want to explore with this in terms of all those kind of comboing of the abilities and stuff. Uh, so anyway, that is a, a barrage. Definitely take a look at it. It's a big, crunchy, meaty game, and I think there's gonna be a lot of replay value in it.